My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. In this video, we'll learn how to play with the camera and how to move the camera from one place to another. Um, the camera is, is actually a map entity that de determines the visible area of the map currently displayed on the screen. So it has a size which is uh, by default the size of the screen that can actually be changed which is very useful to make uh, um, a, a HUD that occupies some part of the of the screen. We will see that actually in a next tutorial. And in this first example I want to make a switch that will create um, a chest but in a, in a part of the map that is not currently on the screen because it's too far away. And we will just move the camera to make like a small cutscene that will create uh, the chest. So the camera is actually just a regular map entity. Uh, you can find it here in, the, in our list of entities in the documentation. So just like uh, the hero, blocks, enemies, treasure chests, and so on, the camera is a map entity, which means it has coordinates on the map and a size as I was describing. It has two possible behaviors. We call that states. The default state is to track the hero. And the other state is manual. We call it manual. And when it is not tracking the hero, it will just follow any movement that that you assign to your camera. So let's see how to do that. Uh, I wanted to create a small switch here with the switch sprite. I call it chest switch and it will crea create a chest here right on top of my castle. Uh, we don't really care about the treasure, we will not even open it in this tutorial. So, the normal way to do it would be chest switch on activated, play a sound, chest appears, and uh, chest set enabled true. I forgot to set the initial state of my chest to disabled. Okay, I can already test this and we will see that actually we don't see the chest because it's uh, too far away from the visible part of the map. It's not overlapping the camera. Uh, so how do we fix it? Before we create the chest, we will do this small cutscene. So first we get the camera with map get camera. So there is always exactly one camera on the map. You cannot remove the camera or you cannot create other cameras, at least in 1.6, because actually in 1.7, which is not yet released uh, at the time I'm recording this tutorial, but in 1.7, there will be some multiplayer features. And uh, among other things, it will be possible to have multiple cameras uh, on in the same game and even multiple maps. Um, but we, of course, we will not do this today. But if you are watching the tut this tutorial in the future, it's it might be interesting to know that. But okay, map get camera, and uh, yeah, we it's really just a regular entity, so we can create a movement like we always do. So you could create a movement of type straight and um, compute the angle yourself, your, the angle of your movements to, to go to the treasure chest. It's a little bit tricky um, because the origin point of the camera is actually, so the camera is um, has the size of the screen, right? So. If I just do that to represent it, 
it has like this size. So when you are on the switch, your, the camera is approximately here. And the coordinates of the camera as, are actually the upper left corner here. So you have to compute the coordinates that go not from the upper left corner to the chest, but from the center of the camera to the center of the chest. Um, the target movement type helps a little bit with that and also especially it helps because it, it will just stop the movement when the target is reached. So you don't have to compute also the distance. Uh, so target movement is really the best here. We will do set speed 200 pixels per second and we need to specify the target. So the target should be um, the chest. We'll see the problem that I was just describing. But let's let's start like this. Movement start. We start the movement on our camera. And when the movement finishes, we do this callback. Uh, that creates the chest. I mean, that enables the treasure chest. Oops, <laughs> I forgot to remove that. Okay, let's keep the code visible. Okay, so I'm going too much to the right and it's because I haven't fixed that problem that I was describing. Uh, when I did uh, target chest, I mean, when, when I start the movement, it, it always moves uh, the origin point of whatever entity I am moving. So here, the origin point of the camera is the upper left corner. So the movement that was done is actually here. The camera moved like that towards the chest. So the center of the camera was not on the chest. How do we fix that? Uh, one way to fix it is to actually uh, move our target. Instead of targeting the chest, we can target uh, more to the left and more to the north of the chest, where we then hate are the size of the camera. So that should work, but thankfully there is an easier way. Because whenever you are moving the camera, you basically always have this problem. So there is a helper for that in the camera API. You can ask the camera, um, get position to track. And it will tell you whatever position would be needed in order to have the camera centered on an entity or on a point. And that also will respect map limits and separators, which we have completely ignored so far. But don't forget that the camera uh, considers the map limits, of course, as obstacles and the separators, uh, like here, as obstacles too. Um, except when when the camera is moving. When it's tracking the hero, it will um, respect these limits. And when it's when you move it explicitly, you can move it wherever you want. I mean, you can move it through separators, but uh, you can still not move it. Uh, can you move it outside the map limits? I have a doubt. <laughs> Maybe you can. So my point is that you should just use this and it will do all the computation for you. Get position to track. Uh, to track what? The chest. Basically it will do for you the the small coordinate calculation that I did uh, 
just a few seconds ago. And it will do it better also because it will consider the exact center of the treasure chest and not the origin point of the treasure chest which is slightly below. But that's really just a few pixels of, of difference. <laughs> okay, I have no idea what I've done here. It's n clearly not working at all. Um, okay, set target shouldn't... Okay, I forgot to remove this first parameter, so... Yeah, I added some offset to to the chest itself, but... Here, I just want the target to be these exact coordinates and not the chest coordinate plus the result of the function. Okay, that's better. Uh, let's finish our cutscene now. Oh, by the way, something that maybe you are wondering. I haven't froze, frozen the hero or paused the game or anything, so actually the hero can still move here. Um, probably you... I don't know if you had time to see it, but I did move the hero. So, um, don't forget about that. You will probably want to suspend the game. Suspend it true. And then let's finish, let's finish our cutscene first. Let's wait like five sec... Um, one... 500 milliseconds, sorry, one half of a second before the chest appears. I think it will look better that way. And then let's again wait some small delay before the camera goes back to the hero. And to go back to the hero, you just kind of reuse the same movement object if you want. And this time the target should be get position to track the hero. So again, um, if I put back my my camera uh, shape here, just to show you, the upper left corner of the camera is here. When I mean no, it's here. When the chest appears, and we want the camera to go back to the hero. So get position to track. We'll return some coordinates uh, like here approximately so yeah the main advantage is that you don't have to worry about whether you are uh, considering the upper left corner of the center or the origin uh, this function does it for you okay so we start this movement on the camera and when it's finished again some nested callbacks uh, when it's finished we unsuspend the game by the way instead of uh, suspended and unsuspended we could do also hero freeze and then hero unfreeze But I prefer set suspended because it will also freeze all entities like uh, en enemies will stop moving. Uh, really when the game is suspended, it's like when it is paused um, from the point of view of all entities. So we don't only want to, to freeze the hero, we, we really want to suspend the game. Um, okay, cool. What else do we need? I think, oops, I think that's it. We just need to test. Okay, it works. Oh, except that <laughs> my camera is still in manual state. So, as I was saying at the beginning, there are two states for the camera. The default state is tracking the hero. It could also be tracking another entity than the hero. Uh, I can use start tracking here. And the other state is manual. That is triggered 
either with start manual or when you actually start a movement on your camera. And when the movement stopped, stops, the state does not change again. So um, we have to track the hero again, start tracking hero. Okay, cool. So that was a nice first example of moving the camera. Actually, um, there is nothing really, really new because since cameras are regular map entities, um, you can just use the, the usual movement API. Uh, well, what's new is uh, this uh, notion of uh, two possible states of the camera and get position to, to track is really, really helpful. Um, okay, so that was the first example of camera. Something else that is really cool that you could do with the camera is uh, shaking the screen to make like an earthquake effect. So that will be our second example in the next tutorial. And then we will um, continue about the head-up display and learning the camera uh, is actually useful also for the HUD uh, if we want to make um, a Game Boy style HUD. Uh, what I mean by that is um, that the bottom part of the screen or maybe the top part like 16 pixels uh, are used only for the HUD and do not display anything, f anything from the map. And to achieve that we will actually resize the camera. It will no longer feed the whole screen, our camera, but uh, less than that. We will also see how to do that. Um, yeah, so thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!